Hi, everybody. I, in my work at EL, Education, formerly Expeditionary Learning, one of the things that I get to do is manage our online collection of high quality projects. So to pick up on that thread of really high quality student work, one of the things that we really, really believe is that teachers and students can be inspired to do more than they thought was possible. So I want to share with you some of those stories today. The first is seventh graders. Seventh graders in Chicago, Illinois at the Polaris Charter Academy. These seventh graders were learning about the US Constitution and the Second Amendment, and then Sandy Hook. And in the wake of that Sandy Hook tragedy, these kids started asking really tough questions about their own safety in the world, their safety in their community, their safety at their school. And that inspired them to start to do some data collection of their own around gun violence in their community. West Humboldt Park in Chicago is one of the most dangerous communities in our nation with some of the highest rates of gun violence. And when these kids learned about those statistics, the ones that they experience in their neighborhoods, they were inspired to do two things. The first, they created a book of stories to honor the people who were working actively towards peace in their own community, called the Peacekeepers of Chicago. And the second was they organized a citywide day of peace where they said to their entire city of Chicago, let's have one day where everybody puts their guns down, where there is no violence in our city. And they created these beautiful PSAs to promote it. And they organized activities for families and community members to come together. And so we look at the success of that day. And it wasn't completely free of violence in Chicago that day. But if you look at those green areas in the seven neighborhoods right around Polaris, it was. There was zero gun violence in that one day. And those students knew what they were capable of and what they could achieve. Hooked on books, seventh and eighth graders, in Santa Fe start a statewide literacy program. And they started it because they said, well, so in New Mexico, we have a 50% dropout rate. We are 49th in the country for literacy. What can we do about that as kids in middle school? Well, we can inspire younger kids to read. How about if we offer them prizes? And so they went out and they beat the pavement and they raised all kinds of money and had things donated and their, pro their prizes weren't just bookmarks and stickers. They were bikes and skateboards and Kindles, and they had a trip somewhere. It was amazing. And the energy built and built and built around this project. But the kids didn't stop there. They said, OK, now everybody's super excited to read, but a lot of the kids in Santa Fe don't have access to books. Not the poor kids that we want to reach out to, that we want to engage the most. OK, so where are those kids just hanging out with their families? They have to wait at the DMV. They go to doctor's offices. So these seventh and eighth graders, they built bookshelves. They painted those bookshelves. They got books donated. They stocked the bookshelves. They made books in their city accessible to kids who were younger. And they didn't stop there. They said, OK, so now kids are motivated and they're excited. But there are a whole bunch of kids in first and second grade falling further and further behind, and they just don't know how to read. What can we, as middle school kids, do about that? And they worked with their teachers to create a two-week summer program called Reading is Magic. And they all volunteered their time for these two weeks. And they created a summer program that, on average, the kids who went to the summer program showed a year's worth of growth after two weeks of working in this summer camp. It's pretty exciting, right? Yeah. Uh, revitalize Rochester. Sixth graders in Rochester, New York, um, they created a professional quality report to argue for restoring water to the dry Erie Canal waterway and building a surrounding commercial district. They did research, they did interviews, they raised money, they traveled. They went by car, by plane, in small groups and interviewed people at four different cities nationwide who actually had done successful water restoration and whose cities were growing because of it. Now, 
This report was actually their second try. They had gone to the city and they had said, you know, here are all of our findings. And the city said, nope, sorry, too expensive. We're not going to do that. The kids didn't give up. N the next year's sixth graders took on that same project, continued the research, wrote another report, brought it to the city. And this time, the city said yes. And they, do they ended up committing tens of millions of dollars and publicly, the mayor in Rochester said, we have committed to do this because of the project work that these kids did, because of the report that they wrote and the work that they did. Those kids saw the power of doing more than they thought possible. Small acts of courage, seventh graders did a case study of civil rights in Portland, Maine. They created a set of four books um, they each had to interview a local civil rights leader. The same 22 heroes were in each of the four books, but different sets of kids interviewed the same folks. The set of books was shared in an exhibition and presentation at school. They had period music, displays, and the heroes, families, school members, and local press all attended. Perspectives of San Diego Bay. This is a High school project from High Tech High. 11th and 12th graders there did extensive research with the help of experts, including Jane Goodall, who actually ended up writing the foreword for the book. This is meaningful work because it answered a real world need. There had never before been a field guide made for the San Diego Bay. And it is truly beautiful work, compelling, and it encouraged students to really care for the environment that they live and learn in. Tide Pool Treasures. The other end of the spectrum, kindergarten and first grade kids working together, collaborating. They took 12 weeks to learn about tides and tide pool habitats. They became authentic experts through field work and practicing scientific inquiry. And they created this kit because they wanted to help others understand tide pools and tide pool habitats. This kit of interactive games and materials was written, painted, drawn all by kindergarten and first graders. Slithering Snake Stories. This was an ebook that was created by second grade students at Conservatory Lab Charter School in Boston, Massachusetts. This was a six month study of snakes. And all of the reading, drawing, speaking, everything was done through extensive critique and revision. Kids went to a recording studio and recorded the tracks. They then learned how to layer in all of the rest of the audio over those tracks. They played the music themselves that you'll hear. And in some cases, they wrote the music as well. Really impressive work. What I want to leave you with is a music video that they created as a part of this expedition. And this music video absolutely 100% captures the joy of learning. It doesn't matter if you're scared of them or not. Just open up your heart because snakes were just born this way. That was great. That was actually great. Really hard. So 
just to give my plug for my deep dive this afternoon, we will be looking at all models like this from Models of Excellence and how looking at models like this with kids, never have I seen a kid look at any of these models and say, oh, that's too hard. No, kids look at it and say, I want to do that, what those kids did. So we'll look at how models can inspire kids to do more than they think is possible. Thank <laughs> you.